I am reading Godfather Death by the Brothers Grimm. This story is targeted more toward third, fourth grade age children, and the moral is be careful who you trick. Um, so to start, there once lived a poor man who had 12 children and who had to work day and night just to feed them. When the 13th was born, the man was so desperate that he didn't know where to turn. Finally, he ran out to the main road leading into town and decided to ask the first person he met to stand godfather. That first person turned out, turned out to be the good lord. And he already knew it was on the man's mind. You poor soul, he said. I feel sorry for you. I'll hold your child at the christening and you can be sure that I'll take care of it and make certain that it finds happiness on earth. The man asked, tell me who you are. I am your dear lord. Then I don't want you as the godfather, for you give to the rich and let the poor go hungry. The man said that because he did not know how wisely God distributes wealth and poverty. And so he turned away from the Lord and kept on going. Then the devil came up to him and said, What are you looking for? If, if you make me your, chi your child's godfather, I'll give him a heap of gold and all the pleasures found in the world to go with it. The man asked, Tell me who you are. I am the devil. Then I don't want you as a godfather, the man said. You deceive people and leave them astray. When they had parted ways, the bony legged figure of death came marching up to him and said, Let me be the godfather. The man asked him, Tell me who you are. I am death, and I can make sure that and I make sure that everyone is equal. The man replied, You're the right man for me, for there's no difference between rich and poor. I'm going to make you my child's godfather. I'm going to make your child rich and famous. For he is for the man who was, has me as a friend will never lack for anything. The man said, "The christening is next Sunday. Make sure you're there on time." Death was there as he had promised, and he made ev and he made a very proper appearance. The boy had nearly grown up had, was nearly grown up when his godfather showed up one day and told him to, to uh, told him to accompany him on a walk. He took him out into the woods and showed him, showed him an herb that was growing there and said, It is time for me to give you your christening present. I am going to see to it that you become the most, a famous physician. If you are called to the bedside of someone who is ill, I am going to be right there. If I am standing by the patient's head, you can speak up, and you can speak up right, speak right up and declare that you weren't able to cure him. And if you give him some of this herb, he will recover. But if I'm standing by the feet of the person who was ill, then that then the patient belongs to me, and you will have to declare that all efforts in, are in vain, and that there is no doctor in the world who can save him. Just be careful that you never use this herb against my my will, or you might find yourself in deep trouble. Before long, the old, the young man had become the most famous physician in the world. People would say about him. All he has to do is look at a patient, and he knows how they, just how things just how things stand. Whether the person will, be, will recover or get worse and die, they will come far and wide to seek his help with those who were ill. They gave him so much money that before long he knew he was a rich man. One day it happened that the king of the land became ill. The physician was summoned to and asked to determine whether the king had any chance of, of recovering. But when he arrived at the royal bedside, he saw that death was already standing by the king's feet, and no herb on earth would save him. Just that, if I could just cheat death this once, the physician started thinking, of course he'll be annoyed with me, but, of, but after all, I am his godson. He might be willing to close one eye. I think I'll take a chance. He took hold of the patient and turned him around so that death was standing by the king's head. Then he administered some of the herb, and the king recovered. But death strode over to the physician and gave him a dark, sinister look. Shook his finger at him and said, You've put one over on me. Since you're my godson, I'm going to let you get away with it this one, get away with it this one time. But if you try it one more time, I'll, you'll be risking your own neck. Believe me, I'll take care of you myself. 
Not much later, the king's daughter fell gravely ill. She was an only child, and the king wept day, night and day until the, his eyes clouded over. He proclaimed throughout the land that if anyone could save her from death, the man would, that man would become her husband and inherit the crown. When the physician went to her bedside, he discovered that death was, stand, was sitting by her feet. He should have remembered his, God, his godfather's warning, but he was so bedazzled by the beauty of the princess and by the joyous prospect of becoming her husband that he threw all caution to the winds. He didn't even notice that death was casting angry glances in his direction and that he raised his hands to threaten him with his bony fist. He just lifted the patient up and put her head where her feet had been, and he gave her some of the herb, and before long her cheeks became flushed and she started coming back to life. When death realized he had been cheated out of his claim a, a second time, he showed up to the physician and said, now you've, done, now you've had it, it's your turn to die. And he gripped him so firmly with his ice cold hand, with his ice cold hand that resistance was, imp was impossible. Death took him to an underground cavern where there were thousands and thousands of lights burning in endless rows. Some were large, others medium sized, and still others quite small. At any moment, some went out and others flared up. And so little flames were always changing as they dropped, as they popped up and down. Here you can see the candles that are the lights of human lives. The big ones belong to children. The medium sized belong to couples and the, and their prime. The little ones to the aged. But sometimes even children and young people only have small candles. Show me my candle, the physician said. And he was certain that his candle would be quite large. Death pointed to a tiny wick that was just about to go out. My dearest godfather, light a new one for me. Please do that so I can have some pleasures in life by becoming king and marrying, this, marrying the beautiful princess. I'm afraid I can't, Death told him. Death said to him, I would have to put, out, put one out before a new candle is lit. Then put the old, old one on top of the new one, and it will begin burning as soon as the old one goes out. Death pretended to do what he had, what he had asked, and reached for, the big, for a new big candle. But while he was getting the new one, he deliberately had an accident because he wanted his revenge. The tiny wick collapsed and went out, and then the physician fell down to the ground. And then, at last, he was in the hands of death. And that is the end. Um, like I said, I think the story is, the moral of the story is be careful who you trick. And that's all for me. Thanks.